Hello everyone, today I'm finally going to walk you through setting up the Stealth Vision Bundle with Advanced Locomotion System. This tutorial is specifically for the Stealth Vision Bundle, but the process for setting up the included Stealth Visions individually is largely the same. I'll link the tutorials for those in the description if you want a more in-depth look at the settings and materials included in those. I also wanted to mention that I learned how to do some of the changes we're going to make to ALS from a video by Leget Studios that I'll link below as well. Definitely check that out. So the Stealth Vision component included in this project uses special shaders and post-process adjustments to the player camera to simulate night vision, thermal vision, or x-ray vision. But in order to change camera settings, we need access to the player camera. And as you can see, Advanced Locomotion Systems playable character doesn't have a camera in its blueprint. So the first thing we're gonna do is add a camera. And you can do that by pressing this add button and I'm just gonna search for camera. There it is, right there. I'm gonna call this custom camera. Next, I'm going to select the ALS character itself and over here in the details panel, I'm going to search for tag. And if we scroll down a bit here, we'll find this tag that reads ALS character. I'm just going to delete this text. Now, I've tried just deleting this array, which sometimes comes back with an error, but simply clearing the tag has always worked for me, so that's what I recommend. Back in the content browser, I'm going to go into the advanced locomotion folder and into blueprints and camera system. And in here we'll find a blueprint called ALS Player Camera Manager. We need to make a few changes in here, so I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. In the Camera Manager blueprint under the Functions tab, we'll find a function called Blueprint Update Camera. Let's open this up. Here we'll see a branch checking to see if our character has the tag we just cleared. If it does, it'll use the custom camera logic provided by ALS. But since ours doesn't, we want to create our own logic off of the false of this branch. So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect this, and move this off to the side for now. Because we want our custom camera to behave the same way the camera does by default in ALS, we're going to use this custom camera behavior node to sort of trick our new camera into behaving the same way. So I'll copy these nodes over. I'm going to just disconnect them and move them off to the side a little bit for now. Now we need to get a reference to our new custom camera. So I'm gonna right click here and search for player character. And off of this get player character, I'm gonna search for cast to ALS. And we want this ALS animan character BP. I'm going to right click and convert this to a pure cast. And off of this cast, I'm going to search for our custom camera. Get custom camera. Now that we have a reference to our camera, we want to update its location based on this custom camera behavior. I'm going to move this over a little bit and I just want to set world transform and I'll plug this into our custom camera behavior. I'm gonna move these both over a little more and off of the location here, I'm going to search for a make transform and I'll plug this into our new transform here. And then I also want to plug in the rotation as well. Next, I want to plug the set world transform into our return node here and plug the false into our custom camera behavior. Lastly, I just need to plug the location of this custom camera behavior into our new camera location, and the rotation into our new camera rotation, and the FOV into the new camera FOV. It's also very important that we uncheck this return value here. Let's play this just to make sure that our new camera is still working and everything looks good. We can still swap shoulders and change to first person, but we're now using our custom camera instead of the ALS camera. So now that everything looks good so far, we can move on to using the Stealth Vision component with our new camera. But before we do that, we need to jump into our project settings 
and search for stencil and make sure this custom depth stencil pass is set to enabled with stencil. We need this particular setting to get the x-ray vision working. So if you're planning on using x-ray vision in your project, make sure this is set to enabled with stencil. Back in our character, we need to start by adding the stealth vision component. So I'm gonna come up here and click add and just search for BPC stealth visions. Now that we have this added to our character, we want to initialize it on begin play. So I'm gonna search for begin play. And because this ALS animan character is a child of the ALS base class, we want to create a reference to the parent here on our event begin play since the parent uses begin play as well. To do that, just right click and add a call to parent function. We want to plug that in first. Next, I'll drag a reference of our stealth vision component into the blueprint and search for initialize stealth vision. And I'll hook that up to our begin play. I'll plug in our custom camera and our initialization is set up. I'm going to quickly add a few inputs as well so that we can toggle between our different stealth visions. I'm gonna copy these nodes over and off of the stealth visions component, I'm gonna search for toggle. We want toggle vision. I hook up my player camera and plug this into our input. I'm just going to copy paste this three more times. And plug these into our inputs as well. This first one I'll set to night vision. The second to thermal vision. X-ray vision will be the third one. And the fourth one I'll leave at none so that we can toggle this off again as well. And as you can see, we can toggle between each of the included stealth visions as intended. But you'll notice if we switch to the thermal vision or the x-ray vision, nothing is receiving a heat signature or a highlight. There's one more little step we need to do to get this working, and I'll show you how to do that now. To do this, I'm going to use one of these NPCs as an example. I'm just going to select the one that I want, and over here in its details panel, I'm going to search for depth. In order to be registered as a heat signature or receive a highlight, this render custom depth pass needs to be checked on. Just by checking this, it'll automatically register as a heat signature, but in order to receive a highlight, this custom depth stencil value needs to be set between a number of 1 and 5. Each number corresponds to a different highlight color representing different information. 1 being enemies, 2 being targets, 3 being allies, 4 being information, and 5 being the player. I want this character to be an enemy, so I'm going to set their stencil value as 1. And now when we press play and switch to our thermal vision, you'll see he's being registered as a heat signature and as a highlight for our x-ray vision. As mentioned before, you can also do this with the player character. So I'm gonna select our character in the outliner here and search for depth. And I'm gonna set this render custom depth pass to true and our stencil value to five. We can also set these held objects, both the skeletal mesh and the static mesh to render as a heat signature and a highlight. And there you go, we have the stealth vision component properly implemented on our custom camera without breaking any of the main functionality of ALS. If you'd like a deeper dive into the stealth vision component itself, I'll put a link to my previous video in the description, and I'm happy to answer any questions in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, please like and subscribe so you don't miss the next video, and I'll catch you in the next one.